Gundam.tk presents Real Grade RX-78-2 Gundam Hey, what's up everybody? This is Robert184, 2Rs2Bs from Gundam.tk continuing my look at the granddaddy Gundam in Real Grade 144th. We've already seen the parts, but now it's time to turn these pile of parts into that cool looking Gundam. And I hope that it looks that good when it's all put together. We're just gonna plug the ankles into the feet. Next is to attach the hips, which by the way, rotate around here, which I didn't mention, into the waist section. So you'll attach the waist skirts on and then plug in the part of the lower torso into the ball joint. You'll plug the arms into the actual shoulder part here, which you're gonna have to squeeze to get in, and then just put those onto the shoulders. And after you've completed your core fighter core block action, you're going to have... a completed, real grade 1 1 44th excitement embodied RX-78-2 Gundam. And I gotta say right away, of course, my first impressions are can only be positive about this. First of all, the colors, they just pop out. The blue and the red are very rich. The light baby blue in the front of the chest and on the sides don't stand out as much as I thought they would. That extra white strap that you can see there in the backpack, or in the, it just looks fantastic. And it's really, especially, I really like the gold parts here that attach onto the front. There are stickers that attach onto the front of the elbows. They just really pop out and add that mechanical looking sheen to this whole already awesome looking mobile suit. And proportions, fantastic. Here's a shot at the lower body. You can see the different colors of white there in the legs. And here's a shot of the upper body where again you can see the different colors, the reds on the sides of the waist there, as well as the blue, as well as the shining effect from the gold parts on the front vents, the arms, and the eye sticker. In terms of posability, you've already seen in the parts here, but once it's all put together, the waist skirts can bend up and out of the way a fair bit. So the legs, you're going to be able to get them to come all the way up for full splits. You're able to bring them all the way forward, and because of the 180 bend, you can bend them all the way back like this. The ankles and the feet can move like this, as well as pivoting fairly well off to the side. This part just popped off here. And because this opens up, you even get a more, a bigger range of motion than any 144th kit that I've seen before. And everything slides fairly satisfactory when you're putting it back into place. Of course, one of the downsides is that there's just a little bit too mobility, too much mobility here with all of these parts. So you're going to have to line them up, especially to get the waist and its multiple movement points and these waist armor lined up just the way you want them. With the upper body, of course, you can move it here on a ball joint. And because the core fighter is on a ball joint mechanism inside there, there's a lot of waist mobility. For the arms, of course, they're able to spin all the way around. They can come up this far and this much further and then you're able to bring them up and around and you can have them go back of course with the 180 and he would be able to reach back and grab the beam saber if you switched the manipulators so pretty cool overall there and the head can go front and back and move pretty much all over the place for weaponizing you're going to want to switch the manipulators to the master grade type quality ones and you're going to plug the shield in here and then just grab this and and you can slide this to adjust exactly where he holds it. For the beam rifle, you can see that there's, that there's a peg that swivels out, and when you do that, you actually plug it into the palm of the better manipulators, and then this is gonna stay in place very well, it looks like. Weaponized with the shield and beam rifle on, it doesn't really impair mobility in any way, and it does look like a much more filled out mobile suit now. On the back of the waist, you can open this up and then put the hyper bazooka in. You can see that fits on there pretty well, and this is pretty much the fully loaded Gundam. The only thing that it's missing is the beam sabers. For height comparison, at 18 meters, the Gundam should be a fair bit taller than the high-grade after-war Gundam X seen here. But of course, it should be shorter than the high-grade Universal Century Double Zeta Gundam, which you can see here on the right. And don't forget, you can check out reviews for all these kits on Gundam.tk. But overall, you can see that the real grade Gundam, from a distance, you don't really notice how much detail it is. But when you go in close, you can see how simple the high grade Universal Century kit 
looks in comparison because of the lack of uh, varied white plastic. And from the oldest Universal Century kit to the newest Universal Century lead Gundam, here we have the Unicorn Gundam in destroy mode, which means of course it's hulked up quite a bit in height, but it really does tower over this real grade. Finally, here it is next to the Master Grade 1 100th Gundam version 2.0, and you can really see that these two kits have gone in completely opposite directions. And while they both have a very impressive inner frame, it's the outer stylings that are completely different, with the Master Grade, of course, version 2.0 being very coolly done in a very classic, traditional, anime simplified style. It looks like it came right off, right off of an anime cell. Whereas the real grade, because of its multiple parts, panels, and metallic details like on the arms and the back of the legs, really does come across as looking a, a more realistic, if we can use that word when we're talking about fictional robots here. So I have to say that the kit looks pretty cool so far, but what can we do with it in terms of poses? Well, thankfully, because of the box and the manual, there's a lot of different ideas for you to copy. And of course, I'm sure that there's a million ideas that you can think of yourselves. The Master Grade Ground Gundam can eat its heart out in terms of kneeling poses. The beam sabers fit just as well as the beam rifle into the palm of the hand, and of course because they're ridiculously oversized, they have some very cool anime type effects. And again with the posability of the legs, what can't you do with this? An interesting mount mechanism here, because you're going to get this extra piece that attaches onto the 144th action base, and where you plug in the hyper bazooka on the back, you're going to attach it in there, so it's not going in from underneath, so hopefully it's going to remain a little bit better hidden when this is used for aerial displays. However, I'm not really happy with the way the attachment goes into the back because it's not very solid, which means that any pose where he's not facing up is going to result in him slumping downwards. That being said though, it's certainly not impossible to pull off cool aerial poses. And while here I don't have the bazooka directly over the shoulder, there are a lot of poses where you can do that, and so far I haven't really had any problems getting it where I want it to be. Alright, so that pretty much wraps up my review of this real grade Gundam, and of course don't forget that you get the very tiny 144th Amro and the very awesome core fighter to go with it. Anyway, stay tuned for the next and final part, where I will give you my final verdict on this mobile suits and plastic model, and don't forget, Robert184 from Gundam.tk, hit like if you do, comment if you don't, well hit don't like too if you want, and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for lots more reviews. Thanks for watching everybody. Hey, kudos to you for doing your own stunts there.